Well, the next time we see the state Senate in action in Harrisburg, it'll be a furious push to that budget deadline uh, in session for 14 of the 20 weekdays in June. So Senator Mike Regan joining us now. Plenty going on. Uh, he's from Cumberland and York counties here to help us break everything down. And I want to start on, on the good stuff to show that uh, it's not always infighting uh, on party lines in Harrisburg. Uh, there was a bill that passed the House. You have a similar bill in the Senate, which is why I'm asking you about yeah. it, called the uh, Pennsylvania Family uh, GI Bill. And essentially, uh, it would offer free tuition to uh, spouses or uh, children of National Guard members if you re-enlist for uh, a, a second uh, six-year term. It passed 199 to nothing in, in the House, uh, and I know you have a similar bill in the Senate, so why is this so important? Well, I think it's recognizing that families uh, suffer so much when, they're, when their loved one is off serving. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to realize that. I know from my law enforcement career, you know, we're away a lot, and the the other spouse is left to kind of take care of everything, all the trips to sporting events and everything. So it was our, our uh, taking an opportunity to recognize the, what all the family goes through. Did you need to, are National Guard numbers that low that you need to kind of entice people to join the National Guard to kind of help? Because this is essentially an enticement bill. Well, I mean, it's, it's a benefit. But, you know, like I think when, when you join the Guard when you're 18 or 19 years old, six years later, your perspective has changed. You're starting to start a family, and, and things are changing for you. So enlistment, re-enlistment rates have dipped just a little bit, and this is a way to say, hey, look, if you join again for six <laughs> more years, we're going to give you a college education for your wife or one of your kids. A year ago, uh, you were here shortly after the Parkland uh, yeah. shooting, and uh, you said if you had to kind of redo the vote over again, you, you would not favor uh, guns uh, for teachers. Yeah. Um, now here we are uh, right after a week after the uh, STEM school shooting in, in Colorado and, and I want to know uh, what isn't the state legislature doing in Pennsylvania that it needs to do moving forward to continue to protect Pennsylvania schools so that something like that doesn't happen in one of our neighborhoods? Well, I mean, I've said all along, and this was a difficult, difficult concept for people to grasp who aren't in law enforcement, don't know, but you know, we talk about first responders all the time. We should be talking about the initial responders, and that's the teachers and the staff members who are in the school. So when something like this happens, they know exactly what to do. Sometimes I think you're left out in the cold uh, in training and other things. Uh, we, rely, we talk about so much about SROs and first responders, the teachers are the ones who are on the scene when this has happened. And many times these things are begin and end in a matter of seconds. Do, so. you, st do you still feel the same way about teachers carrying uh, weapons uh, in school? I, I mean, I do. I think, uh, you know, we talked about this before in right. rural school districts where the police response is very long. It's something maybe we should look at, but it shouldn't be just anything. And the training that they have to go through before they can carry has to be extensive, similar to what police officers go through. The officers that are in school, uh, do they need better access to the weapons? The ones who are trained, who, who even before they step foot in uh, school? I, I mean, I really think that I'm, we've talked to globally recognized experts and we've said, you know, if you can only do one thing, what would it be? And the one thing is always put an arm vetted, trained officer in the schools. Shifting gears to talk about marijuana, yeah. and you have a unique perspective on this as a law enforcement, a former law enforcement officer. But some stats thrown out there. Uh, Franklin and Marshall poll taken in March um, showed that 59% of Pennsylvanians said they were ready for something like this. And I'm not sure how much you've paid attention to the uh, listening tour that the lieutenant governor has put on. But I'm curious where you stand uh, on the legalization of, of marijuana as it recreationally uh, in, in Pennsylvania. Well, like you said, you know, my law enforcement background kind of, I'm very hesitant. But you have to look at a couple of things. Number one is that, you know, who's benefiting now? It's the domestic drug dealers and the cartels, right? And now they're putting fentanyl and marijuana, and there's different things that I think maybe if there was uh, some control over that, it might be a little bit better. But I think what's really an issue right now is what about the bordering states, you know? Uh, so if we're not legal for recreational marijuana, but New York and New Jersey and Maryland is, we're going to have border bleed, and we're going to have all the issues of the states who do have recreational marijuana with none of the revenue. That's something that concerns so me. So in your mind, it's a matter of kind of getting to them and making a better uh, a better product, so to speak. Not product from a marijuana, with well, a product of actual marijuana, but the system uh, in Pennsylvania, making sure that people don't go out of state to, if they're going to get it, don't go out of state to get it. Is, is that kind of what you're saying? Well, no, what I'm saying is if we're not a legal state, but other states are, it's going to be coming into marijuana. Look at the border bleed for alcohol. Look at the border bleed for cheaper gas. I mean, people are going to go to get it and come back into Pennsylvania. And if we don't have the revenue to deal with the problems that that brings with it, that's an issue. So what do you need to hear moving forward to whether you're on board or off 
board what do you need to hear uh, moving forward? Because well, I mean, most people have said this isn't going to happen anytime soon, but it's going to happen down the line. So what do you need to hear to kind of be on one side of the fence or the other? I don't know if there's any one thing that I'm going to have to hear. Uh, you know, I'll certainly listen to my constituents. We are doing that right now. You know, we're communicating through email and different things. You know, people have concerns. Many are very much for it. Many are very much against it. So we'll see what happens. I'd like to see, I'm a data-driven guy. I want to see what's going on in the states that are legal. I want to see what's going on in the surrounding states to states that are legal. I mean, I, I want to get all the information, make sure I'm making a non-emotional decision, making more of a factual, you know, smart decision for my constituents. So we'll see what happens. And this is a good time for me to plug a story that we're airing tonight on Fox 43 News at 10 about the future of legalization of recreational marijuana, uh, possibly legalizing uh, throughout Pennsylvania. So I mm -hmm. uh, hope you get a chance to watch it. I, I think uh, you'll learn something. I think a lot of people will learn something as well. Well, if I can just pop something in real quick. Yeah. You know, the, the, the medical marijuana aspect of the Chapter 20 regulations where uh, processors are dealing with medical institutions. Uh, my fear is that recreational will detract from that. I mean, it's really important, I think, that we really know what this plan can do from a medical perspective before we go venturing out in other areas. Senator Mike Regan, Cumberland, New York County, thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning. Thank Always you, appreciate you Always having me on. Always great to see you. Thank you so much. Fox 43 Morning News. We'll be right back.